Hi, we are Akihiro Seda from NTT and Yan Dubora from Suze. In this session, we will talk about how to run container D and case race or macOS machines. So, why do we need to run containers on macOS? 2022 is the year of the Linux desktop. So, we could just run containers on Linux desktops as well as on Linux servers. But some ordinary developers still need macOS or Windows laptops, mostly for running some proprietary software. So it's useful to run containers on macOS or Windows. Windows already has WSL2, so you can just run containers there but so far, macOS didn't have a similar functionality, and it was hard to use a Mac for running containers. The motivation to run containers on macOS is just for the dev environments and the test environments. I don't think macOS is the best of it for running production servers. So far, the most popular solution to run containers on macOS was Docker Desktop. It's capable of exposing the host file system to the containers running in a Linux VM. And it's also capable of exposing the localhost ports of the containers to the localhost of the macOS host. But Docker Desktop is proprietary. So we could just install Docker and Kubernetes inside a plain old Linux VM, perhaps via Minikube. But this isn't really straightforward. Some VMs, such as VMware and Parallels, are proprietary. VirtualBox is free and open source, but VirtualBox is specific to the Intel architecture, and VirtualBox will not support Apple's M1 chip, which is based on the ARM architecture. QEMU is free, open source, and supports M1, but still not easy to expose the host file system to the guest, which would run Docker and Kubernetes. And it's not easy to access the container ports from the host. So, we made a new solution. It's called Lima. Lima is similar to Windows WSL2, but Lima is made for macOS hosts, especially made for running container D or macOS, but other applications can be used as well. As in WSL2, Lima is capable of exposing the host file system to the guest and forwarding the ports automatically. And Lima comes with built-in integration for ContainerD and another CTL, which is a CLI for ContainerD. Lima is an acronym of Linux machine, but we originally designed Lima as ContainerD machine to mimic experience of former Docker machine for Continue D. But we extended the scope immediately to cover other use cases as well, so we chose the current name. But Lima still focuses on Continue D and k 3 s Let's take a look at what is Continue D and how to run Continue D with Lima. ContainerD is the de facto standard container runtime that is used by most of distributions and managed services of Kubernetes. So far, Docker was more popular runtime, but Kubernetes 1.24 dropped support for Docker. So adoption of ContainerD is growing significantly. Some people think that ContainerD was 
solidly made for Kubernetes, but it's not true. Continuity even provides Docker compatible CLI. It's called NAT CTL, Container CTL. The usage of NAT CTL is just the same as Docker. You can use NAT CTL build to build an image and NAT CTL run to run a container. You can also use NAT CTL compose app to run containers from Docker compose.yaml. And it comes with a lot of cutting edge features that are not yet available in other container engines, such as on demand image distribution technique called ResiPring, which enables running a container ahead of completion of Pring's image. It also supports P2P image distribution using IPFS and encryption of images using OCI crypto. NASCTL also provides optimized neural running stack for rootless containers. You can't run container D and NASCTL directly on macOS, but Lima provides built-in support for running container D and NASCTL on macOS using a Linux VM. You can just use Lima NASCTL build to build an image from a Docker file that is located on the macOS's home directory. And you can use Lima NASCTL run to run a container. And you can access container port just as HTTP colon slash slash localhost from a web browser running on macOS. I'll show the demo. So this is macOS. And inside the home directory, I have Docker file. And I can build an image using Lima NASCTL build. Like this. And I can run container using Lima now CTA run. Like this. And I can access port using HTTP colon slash slash local host from the Mac OS. Like this. And you can even run an AMD64 container on an ARM64 machine, such as Apple's M1, with Lima NASCTL run run dash, dash platform equal AMD64. And vice versa, you can even run an ARM64 container on an AMD64 machine. And you can also build a dual platform image that works for both AMD and ARM with Lima NanoCTL build dash dash platform. The next topic is K3S. K3S is a lightweight Kubernetes distribution hosted at CNCF as a sandbox project. K3S adopts ContinuD as the CRO runtime, and of course, K3S works with Lima2 with these commands shown in the slide. So Lima CTL start template constructors K3S to create Lima instance for K3S and Lima CTL shell K3S cat etc launcher K3S K3S.yaml to create kube config. And you can just use kube CTL to connect to the K3S cluster running inside Lima. Lima was originally designed only to support ContinuD, but now we expanded the scope so you can even run Docker inside Lima too. By Docker, I mean the open source version of Docker engine. It lacks proprietary GUI, but the file system mounting and the port forwarding are supplied by Lima. So basically, it's very similar to 
stroke a desktop, except that it works GUI. And even Portman, like this. Let's take a look at how it actually works. The hypervisor part is just vanilla QEMU. We chose QEMU because it's free, open source, covers both Intel and ARM, and has a lot of features. We avoided to use Apple's virtualization framework because it's proprietary and lacks some of functionalities such as UEFI and legacy BIOS. This is not a huge deal when you already have VM Linux kernel and init RD, but we wanted to just use UEFI and Grub. So Apple's virtualization framework didn't satisfy our requirement. For file system sharing, we have reverse SSHFS and Bart IO 9P PCI. Lima B4 1.0 uses reverse SSHFS. Reverse means that macOS works as a SSH client, but it also works as an SFTP server using the reverse SSH connection. But Lima 1.0 uses BART IO 9 PCI, which is also known as BART FS to replace the weird reverse SSH FS. There is also another virtual file system technology called BART IO FS. BART FS uses BART IO 2, but BART FS is different from BART IO FS. We actually wanted to use BART IO FS because it's faster than BART FS. But BART IO FS is still not available for the macOS version of QEMU. We could use Apple's implementation instead, but it's proprietary and lacks other functionalities. So we still stick to QEMU. The next topic is port forwarding. Lima transparently makes the guest port accessible as a local host. This is accomplished by watching events in the guest and running SSH-A to read SSH for the ports. For regular TCP ports, we just watch slash proc slash net slash TCP in the guest. But for CNI ports, we also have to watch the IP tables rules because the CNI ports do not appear in the slash proc slash net slash TCP. That's all of my part. In the next part, Jan Dubois will talk about further details of the networking stack and the community. Thank you. QEMU provides DNS to the virtual machine by randomly choosing a single name server from resolve.conf on the host. This works well as long as it picks a working name server. I was surprised to learn how many Lima users actually had a broken name server configured along their working ones, resulting in random DNS failures in their virtual machines. This approach is also insufficient in many enterprise environments, where you have to configure one or more virtual private network connections, which in turn may provide additional name servers that resolve names for internal domains. QEMU DNS also cannot support MDNS because it does not listen on an external interface. MDNS is very useful for ad hoc collaboration between machines on the local network. And finally, QEMU DNS does not provide uh, the names from Etsy hosts on the host, so those aliases are also unavailable. 
We have addressed these limitations by creating a host resolver inside the Lima host agent. This is compiled with C bindings, so it <coughs> has access to the macOS resolver running on the host itself. So it gets access to the default name servers, it has access to the uh, VPN name servers, it uses the MDNS responder, and it uses the aliases defined in Etsy host, just like any other application running on the host as well. This host resolver is then exposed on random UDP and TCP ports uh, using the DNS protocol. And it's only exposed on local host. When host resolver is enabled, which it is by default, we use IP tables rules to map the default QMU DNS server through the host gateway to our host resolver. This makes sure that the QMU DNS server is completely hidden inside and we know that container D or K3S or anything else will only talk to our host resolver. The host resolver also allows us to define additional static names and aliases. For example, we define host.lima.external as an alias for the host gateway address. So this can always be used to access the host from inside containers. Any changes in the networking setup of the host is automatically reflected by the host resolver. So if you connect to an additional VPN network, that automatically becomes available inside the Lima VM without having to restart it. Proxy servers are another frequent occurrence in enterprise environments. We try to set up proxy environment variables for the VM automatically. We start by looking at the system network settings and look for the network interface with the highest priority that actually has an IPv4 address assigned. This is normally the Wi-Fi or the Ethernet adapter. So if the proxy requires a password, the password has to be included in the URL. We will not um, retrieve the password from the keychain and then expose it in clear text in an environment variable. This has to be decided by the user how they want to handle this. A common way to do this is to run a local proxy on localhost that provides authentication internally <coughs> and can be used without username and password from local applications. The system settings can be overwritten by the lima.yaml configuration file for the virtual machine because sometimes a user wants to use different proxy settings for the VM than for the rest of the host. And finally, we use the environment variables from the process environment when the instance is being started. This results in most of the time the proxy being configured automatically without any user intervention but if there are special considerations, we have the mechanisms to override this. So once we have the uh, final settings here, we change any references to localhost or 127.0.0.1 to the gateway host address, because otherwise we would not be able to access a local proxy running on the host. There's no standard of using uppercase or lowercase variants of the proxy variables. So we create matching uppercase and lowercase names if one variant does not exist and we make sure they have matching values. Finally, we store those values in Etsy environment inside the VM. So any shell session, any SSH session, any probes, program started from those sessions will automatically inherit these proxy settings. Port forwarding is working very well, but there are a few limitations that are worth keeping in mind. One is port forwarding relies on polling both PROCnet TCP data as well as IP tables rules. So it may take up to three seconds 
from when a port is opened in a container until the same port is opened on the host. Another problem could be that the port is already in use on the host. For example, you may be running a web server on the host. So the default ingress addresses that would be used by your K3S cluster cannot be forwarded to the host and the cluster is inaccessible, at least through the default ports. Another issue is that obviously the guest IP and the host IP are different. So any um, load balancer or node IP services inside a Kubernetes cluster will show the guest IP as the external IP address, but that address is not routable from the host, which means any applications parsing the service configuration would not work on the host. And finally, we have not implemented UDP tunneling over SSH port forwarding. It should be possible to do this, but nobody has written the code. In case port forwarding is not enough, you can add additional interfaces to a Lima VM using VDE VMnet daemons. They must run as root to be able to use Apple's VMnet framework for virtual machines. The connection between a Lima VM and a VMnet daemon is through a virtual switch. Multiple machines can connect to the same switch. Lima will manage the lifetime of all these daemons. It will start them when the first VM connects to a specific network and it will stop it when the last VM connected to that switch stops. There are three network types. There are host networks that are purely local to the host. There are shared networks that have an additional NAT gateway to the network adapter on the host. And there are bridged networks that are bridged to the external network so are being routable from other local machines. The configuration on this slide shows Lima VM1 running K3S, which is using both port forwarding as well as a shared network and a bridge network. The VM number two running container D is only connected to the shared network. So it's accessible from both the host and VM1, but not from the external network. Lima has been extremely popular. When it was announced on Hacker News, it jumped to over 2,000 GitHub stars overnight, and it has continuously grown since then to about 8,000 by now. In that time, we merged over 400 pull requests from 45 contributors. We did releases approximately every two weeks. It's a very active project with wide support. There are several third-party projects that extend the functionality beyond the scope of Lima itself, like providing a graphical user interface or adding additional client support for specific technologies. For example, Lima includes over 20 VM templates, both for popular operating systems like Alpine, Debian, Fedora, OpenSUSE or Ubuntu, or for many projects like Docker, Function as a Service, Nomad, or Podman. The Lima GUI project provides a graphical user interface to select one of these templates. It allows you to edit the template and then start an instance of it, just like an App Store. CoLima is a command line utility that specializes in the container runtime aspects of Lima. And Rancher Desktop is a GUI that also focuses on container and Kubernetes management for developers. The Rancher Desktop GUI supports container management using either ContainerD or Mobi, as well as Kubernetes using K3S. It also includes the Rancher dashboard for Kubernetes, which we borrowed from the full Rancher project, but narrowed it down in scope to just the local cluster. It allows you to drill down into any aspects of your Kubernetes cluster to look at the events, inspect the logs, or SSH into a container. Rancher Desktop also makes it easy to change between Kubernetes versions. For example, you can install, let's say, 1.19.6, 
then deploy your apps on top of it, and then upgrade Kubernetes to 1.20.3, and then see how your app behaves. That allows you to simulate a production upgrade and see if you can expect any problems from the version change or not. We've also integrated image vulnerability scanning using the Trivi um, service. So I don't have a screenshot for it, but there's a list of all the images in your virtual machine that you can inspect. You can click on the image that you want to check and then invoke the Trivi scanner and see the scan results. Rancher Desktop works also on Linux, also using Lima, and on Windows using Windows Subsystem for Linux version 2. Rancher Desktop is free and open source, just like all projects from Rancher Labs and SUSE. In summary, Lima makes it easy to use Containerd and K3S on macOS. The automatic file system sharing and port forwarding provide a seamless experience, almost as if everything is running on the host itself. You see here four simple steps to install Lima, start a VM, deploy an Nginx container, and then inspect uh, the endpoint of Nginx. Please let us know how you're using Lima and if you're running into any limitations. Share your thoughts with us in GitHub discussions, file your enhancement requests or bug reports in GitHub issues, or contribute with a pull request if you can. We also have a Lima channel at the Rancher's user Slack co-located with the Rancher desktop channel. This is purely for convenience because there is a lot of shared interest in the same topics between both user groups. <clears throat> but otherwise, Lima is a vendor neutral project and not related to Rancher or SUSE. Of course, beyond being a major component of Rancher desktop on Linux and macOS. Thank you very much. This is the end of the recording. We'll hopefully switch to live questions and answers now.